Hello and welcome to Kayfabe is Dead Podcast, episode 11. How are you guys doing today? I am not too bad myself. Eh, kind of, I guess, right? I, that's just a generic thing I do. You know, I'm doing okay. But, in all reality, I'm snowed in. I've been snowed in the last two days. Going on three, recording this on Wednesday. And, truthfully, before before I forget, I forgot to... I forgot to introduce myself. I am Christian. I am snowed in by Blizzard Stella. I think they're calling her. I don't know if you're on the if you're on the East Coast, you know exactly what I'm going through. But I am in Northeast PA, Pennsylvania. That is, I'm so used to saying PA. And we got like uh, at least like two feet. It has to be like 28 inches by now. It's ridiculous. My car is buried in snow, and so is my dreams and hopes and me under college work. Because this was supposed to, be, supposed to be spring break. And I have not done any work yet. And I have not watched too much wrestling yet. And I have not... What else was that? I wanted to... Actually, I wanted to watch some old TNA. I got two old TNA uh, discs in my room. And I my internet was off this week. We got a new internet. Like, uh, we upgraded... Alright, so my internet is not the best, so if I ever, like, uh, slack on putting up episodes, or I get one on YouTube and not on SoundCloud, or vice versa, it's honestly just because of my internet, it's not me, like, I have to, so the deal with my internet is the old one, at least, we would be able to, basically, alright, so as soon as I upload something, it kind of shuts down internet for everybody else, so I'm not going to take away from anybody's time of using the internet. I'm not selfish, so I'd wait till nighttime. Therefore, I would have to post it the next day or something like that. And God forbid I forget to post it that night or whatever the case may be. So now we upgraded internet. And it was supposed to be much faster. Double internet speed. All this bullshit. And that worked for like a day. It was working pretty smooth. I was like, alright, maybe I can actually upload shit now. And nope. Now it actually like basically shut down. And the whole... We had no internet at all, so here I am not trying to use all my data. With all that being said, I kind of slacked off, and I didn't really write too much notes for these episodes because I wasn't expecting on doing a podcast because I wasn't expecting this problem to be fixed till the storm cleared out because nobody could be able to service us. But nevertheless, the guy came. Let me Shout out to that guy. I didn't see him. My, my parents handled that situation, but the guy came. He... uh fix the cable the cable the internet for now and we are good and it was uh sooner than what i thought so now i'm i still kind of thought about if i should do the podcast or not but still my thoughts on some of the things maybe i won't talk about everything but do you really need me to talk about mojo raleigh versus Dolph ziggler anyways for real so I'm just going to cover what I remember off the top of my head. I also did write some notes to begin with. Like, I I didn't, like, just completely fall flat. And, unfortunately, you know, sometimes I do not... I'm not able to watch the whole show, and I have to rewatch it. Therefore, I wasn't able to. And did I really want to go back and watch Monday Night Raw? The passion was not there, I must admit. And, yeah, so that's my... That was my week for you in a nutshell. Snowed in no internet and it's a shame because lucha underground just went live today have not been given the chance to watch that but i will trust me i will that's probably what i'm gonna do all night and it's it's great because i just finished my other show and i was watching scream scream from mtv shockingly amazing my second time watching it if you're into scream if you're into thrillers horror definitely watch that I'm, i'm interested in shit like that that's my that's my thing but nevertheless Let's get talking about Monday Night Raw. And I'm going to talk about Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, tease a little bit of things I got in the works for next week, and also talk about what's going on with the Hardys. You know, I, I kind of I kind of been doing updates on them the last two weeks. There's a little more to it this week, so we will see about that. That'll be at the end of the podcast. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible just because... I am not so intrigued to talk about any of these shows. Not that it was bad. Not that it was great. It was just... It wasn't anything for me. So, let me talk about that. So, what my notes start with for Monday Night Raw is Sasha Banks and Dana Brooke. Now, I know I probably missed a pointless 
uh, cruiserweight cruiserweight match. I think it was a tag team match or something like that. I don't even remember. But therefore, guys, if I'm not talking about it, I do not care for it. Paul Heyman did come out to start the show. Did a promo, the same old promo as usual. I don't care for that. That does nothing for me. I heard it a million times. It was cool when he beat the streak. It was cool when he was going into the Reigns promo because they had a really good build up. But as for now, I do not give a damn for it. He could say beat, sleep, conquer, repeat, beat Goldberg, defeat, beat a whole bunch of things that rhymes with eat. I don't care. Like, literally, that's a done with me. They need to do something else, and this guy's about to be your champion. So, whatever. That's my thoughts on that. Full in depth and everything. <laughs> but, yeah, what I saw first, well, not saw first, but what I cared for first, at least. Sasha Banks pins Dana Brooke with the tight. Now, this is really just indicating Sasha Banks teasing her heel turn even more, which I am more than intrigued about because when Sasha Banks is a heel, she is a badass. She is really a boss, as her character will say. Now, they kind of teased it backstage a little bit too. She was kind of talking to Bailey and saying, you know what, don't let these haters distract you, this, this, and that. And Bailey was kind of like, who, like, who are you talking about? And Banks was like, you know, the haters. Anyways, I'm by your side, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's definitely going to lead to a turn. And I'm excited for how they're going to do it. And I'm excited to watch that happen. Now, let's just hope they do it good. But nevertheless, I will tell you this. And this is going to be kind of like the theme of this whole episode of this podcast. WWE, I got to give them props. I give them shit and I, I give them props when it's due. They're doing a great job at making me invested in things that I should not be invested in. Point example, the Randy Orton, nah, nah, Randy Orton Bray match. That, you know what? Point example, Shane vs. Styles, Miz and Maurice. Those are two matches I did not want to happen. I said Miz vs. Maurice. Miz, uh, John Cena, Belly, whatever the fuck. Um, those are two matches I did not care for. I did not want to watch. Now, I'm a little more intrigued, and I must admit, like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. So, once again, give props when it's due, right? Then we had a segment with Roman Reigns, and basically he came out, and, well, he had a match, first of all, with, uh, I almost said Davari, Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal, the job rat of all folks. The gong distracted him. Reigns was still able to win, of course, because he doesn't, he doesn't get affected. Shawn Michaels ends up coming out, surprisingly. You know, cuts the old promo that you, you you can't be Undertaker at WrestleMania. It's unlike anything ever. Uh, he's already in your head, this, this, and that. Reigns basically walking on the line of being a heel, saying, you know what? With all respect, he retired you. I'm going to retire him. So basically, guys, if you recall back to my first podcast, my Royal Rumble review, I said... Randy, oh, Randy Reigns. Roman Reigns should come out the next day and say, Undertaker, well, he, he the way I did it is, he comes out, he turns officially heel, says, you guys never did me one favor, talking to the crowd in general, but I'm going to do you guys one more favor left. I'm going to retire the Undertaker's old ass at WrestleMania, and he's going to be a dead man. Say some shit like that, and that's really exactly what he said. So it feels nice to be right, you know, and I feel like that's a good booking decision in general. That's a good story to tell. And I just want to see how they're going to follow it up because still I'm not the most excited for this match and I don't know why I should be. Even though I do think they are capable of putting on a great match, I do think Roman Reigns is a very good performer as much as you guys want to hate on him. He is a very good performer, puts on tons of great matches. If you put on a great match with the big show, and I think it was a tables match or last man standing, I forgot. Almost positive it was the last man standing. If you put on a great last man standing match with the Big Show, he can do a good WrestleMania match with Undertaker, and I promise you he will, to be honest. Next up, we had Austin Aries versus not Jinder Mahal, but Davari. And this was just a this is just a match for Austin Aries to showcase his abilities, and we all know he's a damn good wrestler. We've seen NXT. We've seen... I didn't see TNA, but maybe you guys did. We've seen NXT. We know what he's capable of. He hit a six suplex, a six suplex, and his spinning forearm elbow thing to win. Good, good performance from him. Oh shit! I should have watched a two hundred five live fatal five way. Let me shout shout out to two hundred five live because this fatal five way could really be like something for them. It could be a staple that could it could, it could be something that is a staple in that division. 
like I'm trying to think of an example that I could throw at you, but I, I it could be like that thing, you know what I mean? It could be their own match, a fatal five way, like a covenant, you know what I mean? Like how Lucha Underground has the triple, the three three man tag teams. It could be like that. It could be the triple tag team, and it could be something good for them. And I like that. I like that concept, and they're doing it a second time, and I hope they stick with it. And I know I can't talk about it because I haven't seen it yet, but I will watch it. And as I said, do you guys want me to review 205 Live? Because I don't watch it every week. I watch it when I hear there's good matches on it. And I heard good results about this one, so I will watch it. And come on, Austin Aries is winning. Austin Aries won, and he's going to face uh, Adrian Neville at the WrestleMania. Oh my god, I got hiccups. This is the worst time to have hiccups. Literally, I've been dying, not dying to do this all day. I haven't been dying to do it. I've been trying to, like, avoid this, because... I don't want to get to, I don't know, not, I'm not the most passionate about this right now. I'm not the most passionate about wrestling right now. And that sucks because it's in the midst of me first starting off my podcast. And I literally just closed my phone because I might talk about this for a while. So I started this podcast. I know it's kind of a random moment to talk about this, but that's that's something you could do when you're by yourself. You could talk about the randomness, whatever pops in your head. Now, I started this podcast because... Truthfully, I I would watch these YouTube channels and I would watch What Culture, for example. And it, it's a great channel pumping out great quality and I was inspired by what they did. They literally I, I was with them since, since literally before they were commentating over their videos. Literally they were just doing like I hate stupid I hate them. But the but the list would uh no just music in back of it and no commentary. Like I like to hear people's voices. Now, I was with them since then and I saw that whole page grow. And it was truly an inspiration. And through that, I expanded more and more and more. Then I found a few different podcasts. But the podcast that I'm going to say, because uh, it inspired me the most, Solid Monster Sounds Off, which is a great podcast. And it's truly, it was really a great podcast. And it kind of inspired me to talk about wrestling. And like, so... I had this wrestling podcast in mind before I even started doing any of my other podcasts. And I have a WWE podcast, MMA, and NBA. And hopefully in the future, I could have a movies podcast and a music podcast. Now, I started the podcast with only intention of really doing a WWE and music one. And then over time, you know, I I had interest in NBA. I've I've been a huge NBA fan all my life. And I had a friend who was interested in it too. And I didn't want to wait for my man EJ, who I, who I will continue to mention in all these podcasts because he is my bro, and he will be, he will be here eventually. He should be here for WrestleMania, so hopefully we could give our thoughts on that one, as well as it's just it's just fun because because I want to get you guys excited for when he comes on because that's going to be really great quality when he comes on. But nevertheless, I just I started with the intention of doing the WWE one. And it was because right, when WWE was bad, it was even pa- I was even passionate to talk about how bad it was and how I wanted it to be good again. But now it's not bad. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be acting like it's the worst thing ever because I if it was that bad. All right, listen. When it's that bad, I get I'm in, it's enjoyable to watch because I could shit on it. And sometimes as a fan, we like to shit on it. But. And when it's that good, obviously, you want to talk about it. Like, oh my god, Like this just happened, this just happened. Like, I was really excited to review the Royal Rumble because I, I loved it as a whole. And I'm one of the few, and I don't care if I have an unpopular opinion. It, it is what it is. And I was excited to review Elimination Chamber because I thought that was a great pay-per-view as well. Now, as far as when the product is at the state that it's at now, it's so meh, it's disgusting. It's really like as okay as I ever noticed it. Like, it's... I really don't think it's bad. And I don't think it's great. It's really so in the middle that it's killing me because it's just... I'm not excited to talk about how bad it is and I'm not excited to talk about how good it is. Would I rather it be bad? No, obviously not. But it just leaves me with a little bit of an underwhelming fatigue of it it's just it's it's not the best and i'm okay with that but it's not the worst and i'm okay with that and it's kind of it's a head scratcher it truly is and i don't know how to really sum it up do you guys agree with me do you guys feel like it's as mad as possible like it's literally like raw was 
was meh, and SmackDown was meh, and I could have problems with it, and I could pick out the good and everything. So it's kind of hard when you're drawing you're, when you're drawing this line. Now, I'm learning that a lot of people are giving up on the product because of how meh it is, and I I'm kind of at like a split decision where sometimes I'm just like you know what. I don't want to write notes about this shit because I'm not into this shit. But at the same time, it's like I've been dying to do this podcast and I'm passionate about doing this podcast. And as much as I would, obviously the views aren't there, but that's okay. I just started. It's the 11th episode for Christ's sake. And you know what? That's all fine with me. And I will get this podcast as big as it could possibly get. And it's going to be big. I promise you. I, when I'm behind something, I'm going for as big as possible. And I'm going to try my best to get it there. I am I am an achiever. And I'm up late nights doing the most pointless shit trying to benefit my future. But I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about the wrestling product as a whole. And I just want to say that the passion that I have for it is slowly dying. And it's slowly getting into the stages where I don't want it to get. And that that's because before I was excited for Monday Night Raw. Before before I would, okay, today is Raw. And then even when I watch it and disappointed, and even when I watch it and realize that it's meh, I'm like, you know what? You know, it was, it was still like a it was still like an event. Right now it's as meh as possible, and it's just I'm not even excited. I'm like, oh shit, it's on. Like I keep forgetting it's on. It's also because I'm in college and, like, I already got a hectic schedule as is. And maybe I'm working that day. But, like, Monday Night Raw was on. And I didn't tune in until, like, 15 minutes in. Because I was just like, oh, shit, I forgot it's on. That, yeah, that's just... that. I didn't want to go on a rant or anything. And I don't think it was a rant. I just wanted to talk about my feelings toward the product as of late. I'm going to still, obviously, give as passionate as a performance I can on the podcast because I love doing this shit. I really love talking about it. And I'm going to love when I see the comments. So guys, please comment. Please interact with me. Please, you know, just let me know somebody is there and listening because I I, I know people are. I truly do. Like, I had one person comment before and even that was humbling in itself. It was like, wow, somebody took the time and they commented about something 30 minutes into the video. So the fact that they got there they got there. That's unreal. Like, that's great to me. So, shout out to that person. That was on the NBA one. So, I, you know, I don't think they're listening to this one. If you are, fucking, you are the best, literally. But please, guys, let me know if you guys are listening, I should say. But let me know what you guys think of everything that I'm saying. Do you agree? Do you disagree with me? Do you want to put me on into information I may not know? Because, you know, I'm still young. I, I always say I haven't watched the 90s. So, not in the, like the 90s as in like the 90s, 90s. Not the not the Attitude Era. I've seen most of the Attitude Era. I wasn't around for it, but I, I did my research on that. Trust me. But, yeah, just, just I don't know, guys. Dude, comment whatever you feel, and I, I would respond back. I, you could ask me anything about the product, and I promise you I'll respond back and give a very passionate answer, and we can have a discussion. You can follow me on Twitter. You can do all that. I, I really don't care. Be my friend. Like, legit. Like, you guys are, whoever's listening, if you're listening, thank you. Like, you guys are special to me. I just want to really make that known, and you will be special from zero subscribers to 13 that I'm at now to 105. I said 105 like it's the fucking gold mark uh, The gold standard Shout out to Shelton Benjamin he should be back soon But like a million Hopefully I'll get there one day <clears throat> Anyways What were we talking about uh, Yeah, Austin Aarons versus Davari Whatever Next up we had Big Show continuing to look like a monster Forgot what the hell he did To be honest He beat somebody with three choke slams Titus O'Neil that's who he beat Looks like a monster still building up to the Battle Royal. The Shaq match is most likely definitely off, which is good. I was not excited for that match, and it would have just filled up the card that did not need to be filled. So, thank you for that. Now, one of the segments I was actually passionate, not passionate, but I was excited to talk about, and it is Chris Jericho. They did have a match earlier in the first hour that I really didn't care for, and I do not remember how that went. I remember a beating being handed out by Samoa Joe and Chris uh, and Kevin Owens. So, kind of forgot how it ended, though. It is what it is. But Chris Jericho made a return, and so did his list. And the first person back to be named on that list 
Tom Phillips. Although it wasn't really Tom Phillips, it was a guy who awkwardly looked like Tom Phillips, just a little more handsome, I must admit. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't sending any dick pics, but it is what it is. I, I, granted, I don't know if Tom Phillips does have any out. I no interest in seeing them. But if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that is, he was kind of exposed by somebody who was talking to him, who just found out that he had a wife, therefore exposed messages of them talking a little sexual. And Tom Phillips is on a plane. This is it's a crazy story. Look it up. Tom Phillips, just he's in the news. Anyways, he's on the list. <clears throat> now, it wasn't Tom Phillips. I just thought it was a funny thing. It was, you know, Chris Jericho always did, didn't know Tom Phillips' name. And now when this random guy comes and interviews him in the back, he's just like, all right, now get out of here, Tom. And he's like, I'm not I'm not Tom, I'm whoever he was. And he was like, I know Tom Phillips when I know Tom Phillips. I, I, I screwed up your name a million times, and you're Tom Phillips. And then they, they, they went back at it, and he was like, you know what I think about people that don't know their actual name? You just made the list, and I, lo- I love it. I love Chris Jericho. I really do. I wasn't really the biggest fan of him at all, and to be honest, guys, I never seen, all right, maybe not never. I think I have. I just don't remember it because I was a kid. Not a kid, but I was kind of falling out with wrestling back then, but I do not remember too heavily the Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho feud, and I've been dying to go watch that back, and I will. I promise you I will, but so for me, Chris Jericho... <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is getting raspy already. I don't have my Powerade by me. I have my Snapple. And it's like, I, I brought like a, what is this, a, a almost, I don't know if it's a gallon. It's something. It's two quarts. Let me, let me take a sip. <clears throat> let me drink it in, man. I do appreciate how I in- incorporated that into wrestling. I think I'm going to do that every time I take a sip of my drink that is near me. But, you know, I do always carry that drink. Nevertheless, I never really cared too much for Chris Jericho. I think I did say on one of my podcasts, I just never was a big fan of him. Now, I'm a huge fan. Personality is great. He was also great. He was also, he was always good in the ring. That was never the problem. It was just, his character never really did anything for me. And right now, it's doing the most it has ever done for me. So, shout out to Chris Jericho. You're doing a phenomenal job. Now, Bailey versus Nia Jax. Not going to talk about it. Nia Jax. Uh, disqual- got disqualified after Stomps passed the five count. Um, she got disqualified. Now, it, I just hope that Nia isn't thrown into the fatal four way because that would be a huge mistake. These three girls could put on a show. What I would do is have Nia Jax not be included, then maybe uh, attack the winner or attack somebody in it after, or just have like this revenge story. You know what? I was not in a match at Mania. Like, give me a match at Mania. You guys didn't. I'm, I wanted a match at Mania. You guys didn't give it to me. I'm out for revenge. I'm going to destroy the whole women's locker room. Kind of look like Braun Strowman. I think that'll be a great idea. I think we should do that with her. But as far as Mania goes, keep her off. She's still young. She's still a rookie. She does not need to be on. Now, next was the main event. Kind of main event segment, I should say. And it was termination time. Now the whole episode, Steph was telling Mick he had to fire somebody for that day. And if he didn't have a decision by the end of the Raw, she would make the decision for him. So she she comes out, introduces Mick Foley to fire somebody. And Mick is like, you know what? I thought about this long and hard. Then at the end of the day, a name was screaming at me on the paper. And you're right. Somebody did have to be fired. And it's you, Stephanie. And bro, bro, if you're a female bralette whatever we would call females but whatever um it was a great segment watch this on on youtube i'm sure it's on the youtube channel hopefully the whole thing it was such a great segment and it really mick foley really got his balls back he really i he delivered a passionate promo getting his balls back and his balls that have been taken away from him for the past however long the brand split blend been i forgot was it survive? It was going during Survivor Series, so November. So it's been at least five, six months, maybe, and he'd been getting his balls taken from him every single day. So finally got them back to the point where Triple H appeared. His music actually came, and so did he. And he came out and said, "You know what? I never liked you." It was actually Stephanie's idea to bring you back. I told her no, but you know what? I'm going to let my lady have what she wants. And it was her idea to 
bring her back, bring him back, I'm sorry. And then he threatens his children's dream. Triple H threatens Mick Foley. He's like, hey, you know, Noel wants to be a wrestler, doesn't she? And I forgot his other son. I forgot his name. Jerry, maybe, or some shit like that. And he was like, and your your boy, he's he's in the corporate office right now. I wonder what it, what he would do if he got a notice saying he doesn't work here anymore. And he basically threatened their jobs and their future in the WWE. And you know what? He was he was literally trying to euthanize Mick Foley once again and have him give in. And he basically kicked him out the ring, said, you go. I don't want to talk to you. And as Stephanie and Triple H are like doing something in the corner, talking about whatever, Triple H sees Mick Foley still in the corner, goes to him to get good old Mr. Sacco. After getting the mandible claw to Triple H, Stephanie literally hits Foley in the balls. It's like a full circle. It literally, the story got a correct, like, you know, you everything came around. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I really, that's what I found funny about everything. Nevertheless, they tried attacking McFoley. Seth Rollins actually came out. Seth Rollins got the biggest pop of the day. The crowd went crazy for the guy, which was crazy because they were chanting CM Punk at him not too long ago, but whatever the case may be. Uh, he came out, came out wobbling, hobbling, hobbling, wobbling, whatever, same shit, on the crutch. But he threw the crutch away, and Seth Rollins was back to work. I, Man, shout out to Seth Rollins. It's been, what, six weeks? And my man is running, doing wrestling moves. I know he's only cleared for some contact, but the but the fact that he's cleared at all is such a good sign. Nevertheless, shows how how much of a trooper he really is. So shout out to Seth Rollins. Came back from his tour in ACL pretty quick. <sighs> yeah, um, came out, came from his tour in ACL pretty quick, and this just as fast, man. He's the this WWE staff, the doctors. I'm telling you, I mentioned it last year, last week. Triple H is no joke when he said they got one of the best medical staffs in the world. Because in NBA, this takes this takes a while. In WWE, they, they in and out, and these people got people. These people's bodies are really getting a uh, damage done to them, as you see with these concussion lawsuits. But man, shout out, shout out to Seth Rollins. He came back. He actually, he actually. Was on top of Triple H for the most part, but Triple H went for the weak spot, which was the leg. Hit him with the crutch a few times. Had one shot where he absolutely laid him the hell out. Then he put him in a figure four, and that was the end of the day. And that's the end of Raw as well. Overall, pretty... Uh, who, who, who was to guess? A um, man show. Once again, doing a good job at building the storylines, even if the matches aren't what we want. Seth Rollins versus Triple H, even though that's what we want. That's kind of what we want. Uh, you know, great builds for that. Goldberg versus Lesnar, you know what? We're going to have to accept it. The crowd is into it. Uh, everybody on the internet isn't, but the crowd is. So, I guess, you know, they're more important, to be honest. Uh, Reigns versus Undertaker, it's a, another good step in the direction. Aries versus Neville, I mean, 205 Live, we'll, we'll see the build as well. But this did a good job. It's overall, pretty good job. What it didn't do, though, is I'm still not excited about the, the tag team. And I don't think I will be. I think that tag team needs a whole revamp. And I'm hoping Revival comes and it fucks shit up as soon as they come back. And I'm very excited for them. But that is my Raw recap. Now down to SmackDown, which SmackDown is always much faster because SmackDown are the shorter shows with a million commercials in between. And <laughs> the commercials... I, I I made it a case last... last um episode but i've been hearing a lot of criticism on the commercials now so i'm glad people are seeing what i was saying because it was really sickening and i'm getting tired of it by far and no wrestling and guess what that trend continues we had three we had the uh becky lynch and natalia match mickey james versus alexa bliss match mojo versus Dolph match and the main event <laughs> Usos versus American Alpha, which if you listen to the podcast, I love both of them. Very disappointing main event. Four matches. None of them are good. It, all right, if you were to do four matches, I have no problem with you doing four matches at all. If the main event is great, and if you had two solid matches, and you could have one man match, but if you have two solid matches and one great main event, you know what? That's a good show. That's a really good show to me. And if all the matches are great, even better. But a great final match. That's what I want to see. I didn't get that from Usos. And 
American Alpha, and it doesn't help when we're not invested into them at all, and it doesn't help also when you have segments of backstage, of Shane McMahon walking backstage, which I'm going to tell you why he's walking backstage and pacing himself, but it doesn't help because we're drawing our attention away from the match. One complaint with SmackDown. But let's talk about the good, and I'm not going to really talk about too much of the bad. I don't want to mention even... I don't want to... I, I feel like, just like in wrestling... The best criticism you could give something if you don't like it is absolute silence. Like if Roman Reigns is going to be at all these WrestleMania cards and all these big pay-per-view cards because he gets a response. If he was to come out and hear crickets, guarantee you he's off the card. So take that in when you want a person to be pushed and when you want somebody to be de-pushed. Just be quiet. Don't give a CM Punk chant. Don't do this. Don't do that. Just shut up. Now, Styles came out to start it off. Basically, a kind of face promo just saying how he deserves the WrestleMania shot. This is that. And it was taken away from him. And he's going to make Shane McMahon pay for it. Now, I'm going to talk about this first. Because he did make Shane McMahon pay for it. He waited for him backstage and waited and waited. Shane McMahon was hella, hella late to his job. But he finally arrived and got his ass beat by AJ Styles. Absolutely murdered. It, there were some rough shots, to be honest. Slammed into car doors, slammed into this, slammed into the garage door. He was getting absolutely mutilized, brutalized, mutilized, all, all, all the same to me. And he eventually got his head put through a car win- window. I almost said windshield, but no, it was a car window. And he started bleeding. And literally, as I was watching the segment, I was like, just give me blood, just give me blood, just give me blood. And little did I know, I had a nice puddle of blood on the floor now, I think this might have been real blood. Like, not as in, I mean, I, every time they bleed, it's real blood. But I think it might have been a real cut because it was on the top of a head. It was on top of their head. And if you know, they blade right below the hairline because it's a quick spot that heals very quickly and it bleeds the most. And you avoid all damage, like you, you avoid all nerves and everything like that. But no, this was on top of the head and the way it was leaking down wasn't a normal way. So I might think this is real blood, which if anything added more and it shows you how blood really adds to a feud, a storyline, a match, everything. Because this added more for me. Now Shane eventually resolved this issue. Well, let me get to this first. Styles was backstage talking to the Usos out of all people and they were trying to ask him what the hell he was doing. He eventually walked out of the locker room trying to go home and Daniel Bryan said, you think you're untouchable? You think because you're AJ Styles, we need you? We don't need you. AJ Styles was like, what are you going to do, fire me? And Daniel Bryan was like, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You're fired. AJ Styles is fired from the, from SmackDown, at least. Now, it's not real. I, I think we all know that. It's just, you know, another kink in the storyline. But I do like it. And uh, to be honest, Shane ended up coming out at the end of the show, the closing moment. Literally at the very end, it was like 10-01. And he said, Styles doesn't have a match for Mania. Now he does. Now, he didn't say it was going to be Shane McMahon. Still have time to put Finn Balor in there and do what I want and do what I put on my WrestleMania Dream card. So, another another thing. Watch that WrestleMania Dream card. I'll do a little shout-out to that at the end because the, rev- the reviews are really stacking up for that one, and I'm proud of it. So, I really, again, I wasn't excited for this feud at all. Now, I'm, I'm putting this on record right now AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon at Wrestlemania 33 will be the match of the night it it will it's going to be the match of the night the only matches I see competing with it if they keep it a triple threat the triple threat match Kevin Owens and Jericho that, that's competition at least and maybe Reigns versus Taker to be honest as far as the other matches, I don't think they're going to compete with it. I'm telling you, this might steal the show. And it's because AJ Styles could put on a performance with a damn... Uh, he could he put on a great match with James Ellsworth. Like, I was invested into that match. James Ellsworth. For Christ's sake. He's he really the MVP of the whole company. And shout out to AJ Styles, for real. Now, next up, what I have to talk about, I'm not going in no type of order. I'm going into what I remembered the most. 
Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Now, Randy Orton addressed Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt was on the the big screen. He was on the Jumbotron, whatever you want to call it. And Bray Wyatt was basically saying that he, you know, Randy Orton freed the spirit of Sister Abigail and the spirit is now inside of him and he is now induced in her ashes and the child would run and the sheep with the shepherd follow the buzzards uh, run yeah there's some shit like that it, 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 you know Bray Wyatt always goes along the lines of that tone but basically that he is now a part of Sister Abigail and she is free and she's in him so this and he's as powerful as he ever was I'm pretty sure he said that so I think this is a great look for both of them. I think this this up the feud even more. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Now, I would say this could still a show, but I don't think this is going to be a great wrestling match just because these they're two contrasting styles. I mean, we've seen, I think it was SummerSlam. No, SummerSlam was Randy Orton. Survivor Series, maybe then? I, I don't really remember. But... They put on a they put on a okay match. Like I just don't think their styles would make for that. But I think the storytelling in this match would already boost it up, and the finish, if is do, if done correctly, can make the match even better than what it is. But I don't think it will be the best match of the night. But nevertheless, I think it's a good sign for this feud. I give it my praise. Now we had a Miz TV segment where Miz TV basically their guest was Miz and Maurice. And now Maurice really got a chance to shine. She really got a chance to cut a promo. And she basically drawing the lines of what's kayfabe and what's not. But we all know, guys. Name of the podcast. Kayfabe is dead. (laughs) Um, So what happened was she was saying how the Bellas stole money from her. Stole her TV contract from her. She mentioned Kelly Kelly, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, again, drawing the lines of what's real and what's fake. Because I'm pretty sure there was a story about this in real life. And it's true. So, uh, nice, nice way to take on the feud. Once again, invested into a feud that I shouldn't be because I'm really invested into this feud, actually. The last promos, Miz making everything great. I seen him on 205 Live, I'm pretty sure. I seen him last week. I, I know I watched that after the fact. And let's just say, Daniel Bryan, a year and a half, I'm with it. Just hope it's in WWE. If not, go to... I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Like, I'm sorry unpopular wrestling opinion i don't like new japan style way too slow for me another unpopular opinion i'm gonna get a a a dislike for this alone but i don't mind being that opinion i respect it for what it is but i don't like the okada and omega match i thought it was good i don't think it was six stars and i don't really take that Meltzer's rating into any any i don't really use that for anything but i don't think it was that great of a match where people are making it it was an hour-long match an hour long. I don't want any match to be an hour long if it's not... I, I, I don't want it to be action-packed the whole way through, I guess, but an hour long is a very long time. And I don't care that he didn't hit his finishers a million times. The Rainmaker, he didn't even hit it once. Oh, uh, Mega, that is. But it was just... It was an hour long, and I remember, like, four spots. I remember, like, a flip spot. I remember a table spot. The last ten minutes was great. But it's just, you know, that that other 45, 50 minutes, it was too slow for me. It was not too much selling because I don't mind selling, but just I felt like it was selling for two minutes every time. But I don't know. I, unpopular opinion. It's, don't don't hate me for it. But if you agree, let me know because I've seen a lot of people agree with me. But I've seen a lot of people disagree with me. And EJ, for example, loves the match. And I just don't think it's... As good as people are portraying it to be. Nevertheless, I do not want Daniel Bryan to go to New Japan. I want him to go back to WWE. I think he could put on a hell of a match with Miz. I want would who would think two years ago when he retired, one year ago when he retired, the match we'll be dying for is Miz versus Daniel Bryan. That's what I'm dying for. That would be a hell of a match, Miz versus Daniel Bryan. I know there was a Miz versus Dolph Ziggler match, and I guess it's out the way now because Dolph Ziggler is absolute trash. Um... But when Dolph was hot, I would have loved the Miz versus Daniel Bryan match. I mean, I'm sorry, Dolph versus Daniel Bryan match. Daniel Bryan versus Cesaro. Daniel Bryan versus all these people. I know he he was in times with them, but I feel like he was in the main event scene when Cesaro was playing that low card really hard. 
And it's a it's a whole new, new ball game now. And I, I would love to see him versus AJ Styles, Nakamura, some of the NXT guys, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, all these people. Man, I would just we're missing out. Daniel Bryan, we do miss you, and I hope that reason you're not wrestling is for your health, and we're just trying to protect you at this point. WWE is just trying to protect you at this point. But I, that's that's all I'm talking about the Maurice and Miz feud. Uh, Maurice, Miz, and, you know, good segment, good way to get me excited for it. Again, invested into something I shouldn't be. Now, I put, just to mention this, I kind of did already. Dolph Ziggler is doing absolutely nothing. That feud with Mojo Raleigh, he ended up getting counted out. Pointless, terrible, hate it. Uh, what else happened? American Alpha, tag teams, done not into that. I'm not going to go in depth with it at all. This is about to be my end of my SmackDown recap. Alexa Bliss, Mickey James, put on a put on a bleh match, a man match. Becky Lynch versus Tally is not gonna do anything for me. It is what it is. My next podcast. Alright, that's the end of my SmackDown recap. What you guys think of SmackDown? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Did you guys love it? I don't know how, but you know, people people like SmackDown a lot. I, I do too. I think it's a much better product than Raw for this week. I really like the ending segment of Raw, but I really like the Shane and Styles segment. And I did like the Miz and Maurice a lot. So I'm going to give the edge to SmackDown Live this week. Literally an edge. And it's mostly because it's a shorter product. And truthfully, that is a little bit hindering the decision every time. Because it's less rustling and sometimes less is more. But with all that being said, guys, I will next podcast. Stay tuned because... I'm going to introduce a segment where I go in depth on how to fix WWE product. Not when I say fix it, I don't mean do the impossible. I don't mean even cutting three hours of raw to two hours. I mean to fix it with what we have. Speaking of that, quick shout out. The announcing team for SmackDown was a two-man booth. With JBL and Tom Phillips. And it was phenomenal. It was refreshing. It was great. They're not even the best announcers. I do enjoy Tom Phillips. But not as much as the girl on the airplane does. Or the girl texting. Whatever the case. Um, It was just refreshing to only hear two voices. Not everybody cluttered. You know, usually we don't even hear Tom Phillips at all. And it was just refreshing. So shout out to that. But yeah, my next podcast will be addressing the problems of WWE. And I already wrote down like seven problems that I could fix. It might be damn near 30 minutes. Might not. I, I don't know. It's going to. I'm going to test the waters with it. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But now update on the Hardys real quick. <clears throat> Voice is getting a raspy real quick today. It's, it's already the end of the day. That's why it's 10 o'clock. I don't know when I'll have this uploaded. I'll probably upload it today. Promote it tomorrow. Promote it for nobody to see. Because my life is a joke. A way to be depressing. I'm just kidding. I almost choked on nothing. This is bad. I need to take another drink, but I'm not going to do it just for you guys. Now, update on the Hardys. TNA is a bitch. Fuck that owl, as Rebby Sky would say. Matt Hardy's wife. She went on a big rant, a big rant on Twitter, talking. I'm not going to go too in-depth because I'm not a big TNA fan to begin with. So I have no right to be talking about their product because, you know what, I, I don't know too much about it. I, I do like old TNA. I do like Abyss, Jeff Hardy, back back in the day from TNA. I remember watching the Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe match. That's the one I actually got on DVD. I had Hard Justice and Slammiversary, I think, 05 or 06. Maybe even 07. Yeah, the year, years kind of range. I like the Ultimate X match, I think it was. Like They had a whole bunch of good ideas and concepts. And I do want to go back and watch that old classic TNA once again. But as far as the TNAs over the last years, hell no, I'll, I'll pass. I'll stay away. Uh, but Rebby Sky really, Rebby Sky, I, I want to just double check that that's her name. Once again, you know, I know she was a character on TNA with the Hardys. I just, I don't want to disrespect her because she seems like a phenomenal woman and a great wife. And she really put, uh, yeah, Rebby Sky Hardy. This is her? Yeah. All right. So Rebby Sky. She really roasted TNA and she exposed them. So good for her talking about how their contracts are all manipulative and basically how they, 
how Matt Hardy sacrificed, you know, the day after she gave birth, he was at the T- TNA sh- sh- taping, literally the next day, how her father worked for them, not under contract, and he didn't get paid a single dime, and that was okay, so for them to mention her father is completely asinine, talking about how Matt and Jeff funded a lot of the TNA product, a lot of the broken product, and yeah, so basically, shout out to Ruby Sky. Fuck that owl, because that's what she had trending, because that's like the whole Anthem logo. I'm really up to date with it, to be honest. I'm up to date on the whole TNA situation. It's just it's not in my lane to talk about it. And I don't want to say any misguided information. If you guys really do want to hear about it, honestly, just look it up on YouTube. The The news channel that I watch to keep me updated is called Wrestle Talk TV. As I'm starting to slur my words, getting bad now. Uh, yeah, so with all that being said, Matt Hardy is under... He's about to be under a lawsuit about the broken gimmick. Either way, I do want him back in WWE. I wasn't a big fan of the first broken gimmick segment. I would want a refreshing thing on the WWE product, but I really, I just want to see Jeff Hardy back for the most part. And Matt and Jeff as a tag team. So that's what I want in WWE. And I know the chances are getting higher and higher and I'm excited and I can't wait. With all that being said, guys, my closing to wrap it up. Please, please, please comment, like, share, do all that. If you can, check out my WrestleMania Dream Card Episode 6. K Fabers Dead Podcast Episode 6. WrestleMania 33 Dream Card. I really put my all into that one. It's getting like 34 reviews just off me. Like 34 reviews. 34 like listens just from me talking about it. To I keep promoting it because it really is something that I'm proud of. And I want you guys to see my vision for what the WWE product really could and should be. So if you guys agree with it, let me know down below. Let me know there. Let me know here. Whatever you want to do. Let me know what you thought of SmackDown Live, Raw, the whole nine. With all that being said, guys, you can find us under the name on all the above ENT on SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. I was your host. I was. I am. I still am. Soon to be EJ with me. But I am your host, Christian, the voice of the youth. The voice who's about to be voiceless, I should say. Not the voice of the voiceless. The voice who's going to be voiceless uh, in a few minutes at this rate. I'm Christian. Thank you guys for listening. Appreciate it. If you're snowed in, guys, my man Jesus said Tony Montana basically sneezed all over us. That's basically a fact. That's what happened. It's terrible if you guys are snowed in. Stay warm. Stay safe. Don't drive. No reason to. I got. I had work the last two days. Didn't go. I have work tomorrow. Still up in the air. Stay safe. It's it's bad up here on the east side of United States. So with all that being said, guys, listen to this while you're shoveling or something. <laughs> you guys have a good one. I'm out.